Hey, Keith here from Beat the Casino. Hey, I wanted to do a little experiment. And uh, it came about by, and, and we've always talked about this at Beat the Casino. Uh, when we talk about, uh, when people look at a Baccarat game or experts, so to speak, they always talk about the long-term statistics of the game. So tell you what, let's take a look at the long-term statistics. I'm gonna put in this bowl, uh, thousand player hands. Now they always, actually not a couple thousand, there's probably there's probably a hundred thousand grains of sand in there, I don't know. So each each hand of that, each grain of sand represents uh, one player hand. And I'll put about the same amount banker hands. That's pretty close, don't you think? Okay. Oh, someone said ties. Yeah, there's a couple ties. One in about every 11, right? There you go. There's your ties. Okay. So what, what experts do when they talk about the game is they take this and they say, well, over a million hands, let's, let's say just for sake of argument, we have, I don't know, I don't know how many grain sands are in there, but quite a few. They say over the long term, they're all going to equalize. Well, sure, any system will equalize over long term, but let's, let's pour them in a bowl here. I want to show you how we look at a game of Baccarat. Let me get that out of the shot. Then we'll take our banker hands and our ties and we'll put them in a, a beaker here my college days and uh, let's go ahead and mix them up there's our red and blues and everything get them all randomized and, and this is going to represent the sample that everyone talks about of a million hands okay suppose we sampled it and we're going to dump it out and there's our million hands of Baccarat right all in one big shot, okay? So each hand, each game is about 72 grains of sand, right? Okay, let me ask you something. Do you see any patterns in this? Okay, okay why? Well, one, the sample size is so big that anything is, everything is obscured because any, any sample size that big or any system that big where you go to do analysis, if you keep throwing more and more sample size at it, it's going to normalize and it will get the bell curve. Okay, but this isn't how we look. We don't, when they talk about, we look at this at over a million hands. Do, do you play Baccarat a million hands every night? Do you go into the casino and play every hand at every table constantly? Well, of course not, you know, obviously. What do we do? How do we play Baccarat? We look at, we, we take cans of 72. We sit down and play it game by game. And I want to tell you that the statistic, what this is called. If someone is doing a, some sort of process analysis of, of this sample to see if there's any variation or any trends they can find. Now, now listen, you can find variation in a system by assignable cause, which means there's a reason for it. Okay, there's some process flaw, or just by random chance, it, it just happened to be occurring. Okay, in Baccarat, it doesn't make any difference whether you find it by random chance, or it happens, forgive me, it happens by random chance, or there's some technique that the casino isn't doing to randomize the cards that causes the process flaw and causes something odd to occur. It doesn't matter how you discover it, it's just, you, if you find it, you discovered it, and you bet with it. Okay, but back to my point, we take out 72 hands at a time, don't we? we? We may take out this many hands, and then we take out this many hands, and we play it game by game, okay? And we look at it game by game. So we take small sample sizes. We do what's called stratified sampling, and it's you can certainly uh, Google stratified sampling. It's, it's, a, uh, it's a scientific method used in statistics. So. We don't play it a million hands at a time. We play it 72, about 72 hands at a time. I mean, sometimes we play that longer, sometimes we play more. Okay, so let me show you what 72 hands looks like. Okay, so let's say, for instance, we took a couple beads from that. Well, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna grab some from each pile of beads. Okay? If I count them out, that's really just putting in the probability of a 50-50 chance. But that isn't what happens. You just go in and you, when you sit down at a game, you just go, okay, I'm gonna play this game, right? Oh, we need some ties in there. Let, let's say, for instance, we were walking along in a casino 
and we jump into this game, right? So I'm gonna take these beads here. I'm gonna mix them up, okay? Now, this is what a shoe is, right? You walked by, you said, okay, I'm gonna sit down here and I'm gonna put these in here and I'm gonna mix them all up. Okay, so I just took a sample out of a casino. I said, I'm gonna run in there. And then I'm gonna shake them up. Mix them up. Now, do you see a pattern in that way? Well, you can't really see it. Probably not, but that isn't what we're looking for. Here's how the game comes out, isn't it? This is what actually happens. Okay, so let's put it like we would play Baccarat. So there's our sample of a million hands that we took, okay? Now how did they come out? How did it get to that point? Okay, do we see anything? What can we learn from this? But this is how the game is played. It's played one hand at a time, okay? It's played in sample size, what we call a stratified sample. You're looking at one game where there's only a, a limited number of outcomes. You can have a banker win, you can have a player win, or you can have a tie. There's no other opportunities, okay? That's what has to happen in a valid stratified sample. Now, in this game, what would a professional see? Okay, obviously, there are a lot of repeats in this game, okay? There aren't a lot of one in a rows, and there are a lot of repeats. And that would become evidence if you're doing some sort of count with uh, opposites or repeats or anything along those lines, okay? And that's what we look at at Beat the Casino. We're not looking at a million hands. We're looking at it hand by hand. Now, what data do you use that's what's important? What information do you use to determine what to bet next. When you look at the game, obviously, it's easy to say, well, you know, there's a couple longer runs in here and repeats are more prevalent. But at what point, when you're at this point, do you know what to do? Well, a lot of box, I mean, there's a lot of ways that system sellers talk about this. And, you know, sometimes you look at the time before last hand. Well, you know, does it really make any difference what won the time before last when you make a bet or opposite time before last? No, we look at the data at Beat the Casino that's important and has statistical significance of what to bet when we're at this point of the game that tells us that these repeats here are going to continue to occur. Okay, so just for argument's sake, I grabbed them because I know some purist is going to say, well, you didn't grab 50-50. Okay, well, let's see how many I grabbed here to pour out this sample. And I'm going to do it the other way then if I didn't do it, if I didn't do it exactly, okay? All right, so let's see how many beads I grabbed. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. 20, 21, 22, 23. 23 bankers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. 17 players. I'll tell you what, I, I'm, a, I'm gonna put five more in here. Okay, and we'll throw in one more tie since we have a couple more hands. It should be about 111. I'm gonna do it again for you. Now, we have the probability that each hand, banker or player, should come out equally. Oh, I'll tell you what, let's put one more banker in, just, just so we can get a slight edge to banker. We're not gonna worry about the exact math of it. Oops, okay. We're gonna put them all in here, and we're gonna see if we can get trend analysis before. So before, that might have been by assignable cause because I got someone, I got a process floor. I'm, I'm just grabbing things and putting them in. Maybe I grabbed too many more. So is that really a random grab? Probably not, but that's, that's certainly one of the things that can happen. Um, I better mix these up a little bit more, huh, before I put them in. Okay, so now let's put them in. Now that they're all mixed up really good. So now we have the probability that each one of these could come out about 50% of the time with a slight edge to banker.
Here's our Baccarat game, okay? When I grab an equal amount of bankers, players, well, one more banker than player, and threw in a couple ties. What do you see again? Well, here, obviously, you're seeing runs, more repeats than opposites. You're seeing equal runs. I know a lot of players play like that. If there's a five in a row here, they'll bet a five in a row will, go, will come again, okay? If you see a five in a row in player, they'll bet a five in a row will happen again. Aren't those things that we look for in Baccarat? Okay, now when, when, when do you decide this happens is, is, is a key to playing Baccarat, okay? But you can see here that there's certainly, it's, it's not your imagination that, that you're seeing patterns or you're seeing more repeats. I mean, obviously you're seeing more repeats. You're seeing lo a little bit longer runs between two and five long in this game that, that has somewhat of a predictability based upon some sort of mechanical means that we put this system together, okay? In the casino, what do they do? Okay, they shuffle the cards, okay? Here, we grab things and shook them together. So we're trying to randomize things with mechanical means. Okay, which actually will produce results like this. That's why we see this in Baccarat. The randomness is produced not by a random numbers generator, but by mechanical means, okay? So consequently, you're going to see patterns, and it's not your imagination. Your, 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 your perception is not flawed as they want you to believe, okay? What they want you to believe is that over time, it's all gonna even out. You know what, they're right, over time, it will all even out. But each one of these hands, each one of these events, okay, has about a one, I don't know how many I have here, I think I, I, think I put 20, 20, 25 and 25, one fiftieth of an effect on the whole game, on the whole analysis of the game. When you have a million hands, as I did with the sand, each one of them has one millionth. So it's not going to be anywhere near as significant as if you have a repeat here, a repeat here, and a repeat here. Okay, so this is what we talk about at Beat the Casino. We don't sell a system, okay? We're not a bunch of system sellers. We talk about the analysis of a game from at the game level and at the casino level, what's going on in this casino and how do you analyze what's going on in this game right now at this particular time so that you know what to bet and what are the st st significant, the significant statistics that tell you what to bet next. I can tell you it's not the time that just won. It's not this pattern that won here and then because it happened here, it's going to come down here, okay? You need to get in our club, understand the game of Baccarat at the game level from professional players who know how to do it and get involved with talking to us, okay? Okay, this is Keith from Beat the Casino. I hope you liked our little demonstration here. So we'll talk to you again soon.